In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. So whilst we are celebrating Good Shepherd Sunday, and actually there's a collection for the training of seminarians this weekend, so while we're celebrating Good Shepherd Sunday, the Gospel is actually more like Good Gate Sunday. Jesus does say a little bit later, I am the Good Shepherd, just like we heard in our Gospel acclamation. But before that, he describes himself as the gate of the sheepfold. And it's a kind of weird saying. We don't have any pictures of Jesus as the gate, Jesus comparing himself to a gate. Maybe, though, you remember on another occasion, Jesus says, I am the way, as it were. I am the only path that leads to salvation. Remember, he then adds, no one can come to the Father except through me. So the image of Jesus as the gate is a bit similar to that. That if we want to find holiness, freedom from sin, and the security of belonging to God, it means somehow passing through a gate. And he is that gate. Interestingly, Jesus doesn't say, if you pass through this gate, you will make it to heaven. It's interesting. The image of the gate and the sheepfold seem to do more to do more with this life rather than the next. That's why he says, I came that they might have life and have it to the full. I remember some years ago, about 10 years ago, I was volunteering at the hospice in the Wild, And at lunch, I was introduced to a lady who worked there and she wanted to know why I was trained to be a priest. I was still training then. And I replied, to help people make it to heaven. And she answered back, well, I think heaven is a place on earth, just like the song says. What do you think about that? I can't remember what I said at the time, but I knew what I was thinking. Uh, and if I was clever, I might have said it back. I was thinking, now that's a recipe for disappointment. We aren't going to find heaven on earth. All our needs satisfied, unending happiness or whatever. But interestingly, in the sheepfold, inside the gate, which is Jesus, he says, that's the place where we're going to find the next closest thing to it. The closest thing to heaven on earth. He says, I came that they might have life and have it to the full or have it more abundantly here and now. For Jesus, the biggest aspect of eternal life in heaven begins in this life. St. Paul explains this in terms of the gift of the Holy Spirit. When we receive the Holy Spirit at baptism, we are already, whether we realize it or not, united to God. And what is heaven if not the full workings out of that reality of being filled with God? And this isn't some weird thing like being sucked into a black hole and ceasing to exist or dissolving like a drop of water into an ocean. The union with God that the, Holy, that the Holy Spirit gives is about an elevation of our human existence. But it's still a human existence. But it's like changing a world from black and white to colour, from a life in silence to one filled with music. Probably for us, and for me as well, the difficulty with this is that I wonder, would my life really be that different without God's Holy Spirit living inside of me? Do I really live a different kind of existence from so many people around me? Or what about all those people who are baptised, but it means nothing to them? I want to work that out for us in three steps. So the first point, although you receive the Holy Spirit in baptism, and he begins his work of transforming you and your life into a new graced reality, this doesn't just continue automatically in the background regardless of how you live. In fact, if you commit one mortal sin, you lose the Holy Spirit's presence entirely. You leave the sheepfold. You're back out there with the wolves. And that's the situation of most of the people in our country. They might have been baptised as babies, but they just live totally worldly, as practical atheists, even if they still tick Christian on the census form. They don't live the abundant life that Jesus offers, and nor can they even conceive what it's like. If you tell a horse that it's going to have a new abundant life, it's just going to imagine better straw and juicy apples. 
The abundant life that Jesus offers them, they have never known, and not even knowing it, they have left it. Point two. Even if you still have the Holy Spirit present inside of you at this moment, let's say you're a practicing Catholic in the state of grace, to experience that life that Jesus offers still requires cooperation from your part. Above all, it means journeying inwards, of developing the practice of being conscious of God's presence in your soul. This is called the practice of the presence of God. At baptism, I think the Holy Spirit is given to us like a small candle, a bit like the baptismal candle. It doesn't give off a lot of heat, and a quick breeze will put it out altogether. We have to feed that fire. Even though the fire is divine, God himself, God's presence grows in us by practical cooperation with him, praying at fixed moments every day, even if it's just a few minutes uh, at different points, and also taking in some quality time with God each morning, perhaps, being in silence, meditating on the scripture or a meditation book. This is needed to begin to get at that life that Jesus promises here and now, because that life is the workings out of the Holy Spirit being present inside of you, just as it will be even fully realized in heaven. And another way of helping to appreciate this reality and to live this reality is by reading the lives of the saints. They were faithful Catholics who knew the Master's voice really well, and they can help us also to recognize the Lord's voice and follow it more closely. Point three. What about if you're doing all these things, but you still aren't tasting the abundant life that Jesus promises? That's tricky. It's a real question. And I have a friend who emails me about this all the time. And he's a very good man. He, he prays a rosary every day, at least one rosary. He goes to Mass at least twice a week. And he goes to confession whenever he needs to, probably every month. But he says he still isn't happy. And from any human standard, it's probably true. He's probably only operating at about 30%. He can hardly face going out. And while he's self-employed, he's got a lovely job making um, uh, publishing books, he hardly spends enough time on his job, and he can just about pay the rent. And he asks me often, what's going on? Isn't Jesus going to keep his promise? Now, my friend probably represents an extreme case as he's got a complex mental illness. But the point I always repeat back to him is that God's grace, God's Holy Spirit living inside of us, doesn't override our mental constitution. It can only perfect it. And whilst in this life there are already the beginnings of heaven, for some people, that taste of heaven is probably not going to be so clear for them. Just as they find it hard to experience the warmth of human friendship, or family love. If your psychological makeup makes it hard for you to feel any kind of normal joy, the physical feeling of God's presence also isn't going to be very likely. But still, the transformation that Jesus promises of the abundant life, it is occurring in them. Their life is being changed, and they need to be reminded of this, because you'll be able to see this in them better than they can. And I know this is the case with my friend. I don't know anyone really who's as generous as his time, with his time and money and talents in spite of his illnesses. And when I spend time with him, I can see the qualities of Jesus really shining through him. Even if mental health problems and depression prevent someone from seeing or appreciating what God is doing in them, if they are cooperating with God's Holy Spirit, then it's really happening. And if you have a friend or family member in that situation, it's your job to help them see this. In some way, they are adding to the abundant life of our society in a very real way. And they are being transformed themselves, even if they don't taste it. Regular confession can be very helpful to someone in this kind of situation. Because if you go to the same priest, he can help the person appreciate the progress they're making. And how God is helping that one leave behind sin and become more and more transformed. 
So to conclude, Jesus promises the beginnings of heaven, even in this life, through being members of the Catholic Church, being within the sheepfold, possessing the Holy Spirit, truly living inside of us. We all say that we hope to be happy with God forever in heaven. The fact is, to the degree that we are faithful to him, we already possess God right now, at this moment. The challenge is to grow more conscious of this, more connected to this reality, and to allow it to take over your existence. That's the pathway to the abundant life Jesus promises. Your transformation into the best version of yourself, the perfection of your personality through the power of God's grace. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.